Welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at the top 10 cryptocurrencies by market cap. We're going to start with Bitcoin number one, followed by Ethereum, BNB, Solana, XRP, Cardano, and then we'll end it with Dogecoin at number 10. Let's get straight into it. Bitcoin against USD. So for Bitcoin, okay, it looks like a hammer now, right? <laughs> so, uh, okay, we are overbought, not just on the daily, but on the weekly as well. Um, <laughs> I feel like a retrace is uh, one Friday is going to happen, but uh, I don't see it happening yet. If you move up to the weekly, you will see that the candlesticks are still big and it's still green. So we are going to follow what the whales are doing as long as the whales are still bullish, right? And we still see bullish candlesticks being printed. We resume with our bullish bias for BTC. Although we are aware that things are already overbought, which means that if and when things go wrong, they go very wrong. But for now, it's not, you know, returning back down yet. So we're going to stay with a bullish bias for BTC. Moving on to be Ethereum, F against BTC. So for Ethereum against BTC, there is a squeeze coming over here, right? Right at the skinny thing, line, over here, right? Something like that. It's not exactly what I would consider as high quality, but it's a squeeze of sorts. So normally, normally squeezes are like an arrow being pulled back before you release it. So I think, I think more likely than not, there should be a recovery towards the upside. And this whole thing could become an inverse head and shoulders. Left shoulder head, we get a right shoulder over here. Ta-da! We break out. FPDC. Woohoo! We could get something like that. Again, we're still not entirely sure. Uh, things can still go wrong. We're still under the skinny pink line. Sure, we could still zip lower. But um, to, to me, there's just nothing definitive about uh, FBDC at the moment. Against USD, just like BDC, we are severely overbought. <laughs> severely! How much higher are we going to go? I don't know, bro! Uh, we're at a noisy area over here. So I would expect some sort of a resistance. To be honest, we're actually facing some sort of a resistance. But uh, we're kind of closing... I mean, we just started the day like six hours ago, less than six hours ago. So more upside, yeah, potentially for uh, Ethereum. But how much more? Again, we're not too sure. All I know is we are already severely overbought and the end may not be too far away. And even when the retrace comes, I'm not too sure what kind of a retrace we're going to get. Are we going to remain under the highs, right? And if the retrace does come, could it be a second valley in the making? If this comes, it's going to be brutal though, right? It's going to drop back under 2000 again. Will that happen? Or will we see a repeat of 2020 where we just go bananas for BT, uh, Ethereum? Bananas? Yes, no? Or a reversal? What do you think? Anyway, before we went bananas, there was... You may argue this is something like a squeeze in itself, right? Something like that. Before we went bananas. Um, and you can also argue that... It's not exactly high quality. Yeah, we're out. Um, yeah, again, we'll, if you look to the weekly, right, you will see that we're still in a bullish trend. Big green candlesticks, big green candlesticks. We're not too sure what we're going to get uh, this week because we just started this week. It's Monday. So, yeah, again, if look, I mean, if we were to go by the previous weeks, uh, we would anticipate more upside. But we are very, very overbought, very overbought, extended overbought. So again, if and when we retrace, it could be really deep for Ethereum. BNB against BTC. So for BNB, we are also just like Ethereum, right? We are consolidating right under the nose of the skinny pink line. So if and when we break it, uh, this, this will confirm a potential shift towards an uptrend. But until that happens, there is still danger that we could still head lower for. BNB against BTC. I am feeling hopeful because we are continuing to hammer on the resistance here. Hammer once, hammer twice, hammer three times. Every time we fall, we get pushed back up, pushed back up, down, pushed back up. Even if you fall down, I suspect we're going to get pushed back up again for BNB and against BTC. And eventually we could see a nice clean break. And once we take out the right shoulder, we will invalidate the downside target. Because at this point of time, we can still zip lower. Right? Technically, technically. I still think that uh, more likely than not, things are going to switch bullish. But yeah, again, uh, <laughs> so we're not too sure. We are not too sure. We're still monitoring things very closely. Against USD, 
uh, we are anticipating BNB to form a com a, a, an inverse to complete an inverse head and shoulders over here. Left shoulder head, right shoulder, big breakout. Right again, again. We are also quite overbought, so I am anticipating the possibility of a retrace over here for BNB. Will it come now? Next week? After the halving? Again, we're not too sure. We might go right towards the resistance before retracing. Right. So I would anticipate significant resistance over here at around 600 plus, 650, I think, around there. Right at 5 to 1, so we're not too far away. We are not too far away for BNB. So if you were to ask me, hey, can you show buy BNB? Absolutely not. This is not buying season for BNB. Buying season is when things are down, not when things are up. Right. If there is a retrace that comes, then yes, you could consider buying. But not now. Now it's selling season. You'll have to be patient. Maybe. Solana against BTC. Here we are for Solana. Solana against BTC. We are still, in my opinion, more upside to come. We are still in a bullish trend. We're still above the skinny pink line. We are forming a uh, falling channel. So falling channels usually break higher. Very good example was over here. You see this falling channel? Hey, bro. Let's draw it properly. Yeah, something like that. One. Right, it's the first wave. Down. Second wave. Up. Third wave. Down. Fourth wave. There's a fifth wave. More likely than not, there is a fifth wave coming on for Sol BDC. So this is uh, almost textbook perfect. One, two, three, four, five. Almost, almost. Uh, because wave four is similar to wave two. You see that? You see that, boys and girls? When things are rising, they rise in waves of five. So you can count this very clearly. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> you see that? Yeah, so we're anticipating this to happen. I think it's going to come though. Uh, probably, uh, let me see first. March, April. Yeah, more upside, more upside for Sol BDC. And if Sol BDC continues higher, then very likely, yeah, probably 0 0.0035. That's my guess. Again, uh, if you were to go to Sol USD, you will see that we are still in a bullish trend. We're still above the skinny pink line. Um, I can count five waves as well. One, two, three, four, five waves. Uh, there will be significant resistance at around 160, well, 140. So another $20 more to go for Sol USD. The thing I don't like about Sol is that uh, there's really a double bearish over here. Lower high on the MACD, lower high on the RSI, higher high on the price. Moreover, if you look very closely on the daily, there's really a shooting star here. One shooting star here, two. Two shooting stars for Sol USD. On the daily, there is already selling happening for Sol USD. But if you were to shift to the weekly, you will see that there's a hammer that came in. Price was pulled lower, but eventually pushed back up. So more upside, very likely. Any uh, bearish chart patterns here for Sol USD? Nope. Is it still bullish? Yes. But are we overheated? Yeah. Just because we're overheated doesn't mean we can't go any higher. We may even surpass the resistance that we're expecting at 160, right? We may go up to, yeah, take out this tippy top here, right? There's a tippy top over here. So probably around 206, I think, potentially, right? Potentially. So, yep. Be careful, uh, it's not buying season for Solana. Solana buying season is when it's down, not when it's up. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. That's all I take for Solana. Be very, very careful. XRP! XRP is super weak against BTC. XRP was once number three. Now XRP is at number seven. XRP against BTC is so weak. It's just down, 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 down. If you had shifted all your XRP into BTC way back in 2018, you would have done superbly well uh, but yeah again we are hitting a noisy area over here more downside for xrp yeah potentially but we're very oversold but the best time to buy things is when they're low buy low sell high and this is actually low but the question we have is how low how much lower can it go for xrp bdc how much lower uh, if i had to guess we're close to the low probably 800 and sub 850 or 890 so just a little bit more to go and then i would anticipate some sort of a um, you know, buying pressure coming in, right? You will know when it's the low, when volume starts coming in. You see the volume? Yeah. But there's no volume yet, so I think there's still more downside for XRP BDC. XRP against USD. Here we are for XRP USD. Um, anything for us? No. I'm scared of XRP USD. Why? Because this whole thing is like a... 
yeah, mountain range here. Mountains, 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 mountains. We could hit lower. But, but, but at the same time, you can also make an argument that this is a symmetrical triangle. And we could be breaking out. Potentially, potentially, right? But we're marking around the skinny pink line. So I don't really like this, right? There was a nice symmetrical over here. We broke out, but we came back down, right? We came back down to square one. And now we're rebuilding another symmetrical. Something, huh? But you can see from a bearish perspective as well, right? If you put on your bearish lenses, you will see that this is also a mountain range, right? Uh, left shoulder, head. Okay, not exactly, but you, you can see mountains as well. Mountains, mountains, mountains. Yeah. So the price cannot come back down here. If the price comes back down for the, how many, how many, one, two, for the third time, uh, this could be a descending, right? If the price stays here and we consolidate here at around 60 cents, 62, 63, 64, 65, 60, maybe 59 cents, 60, 61, around here, then yes, there could be a breakout. So it's very important that we don't come back down. The moment we come back down, that's it. More downside for XRP would be expected. Cardano, what's up, Charles? Ada against BDC. Here we are for Ada. We love Ada. We've mentioned this a gazillion times, a gazillion, gazillion times every week. We mentioned it. <laughs> it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, squeeze coming on, right? We're expecting this to happen for Ada BDC eventually. Big moves uh, to be expected. But again, the question we always have is how much lower are we going to go, right? Uh, previously, there was a move over here. We broke above the skinny pink line, but we came back down before just breaking back up. You see that? Uh, but all of these moves were accompanied with volume. Hey, yo, bro, where's the volume? Where is the volume? The wheels are not stepping in yet. So I suspect there could still be more downside for AWBDC. We're not entirely sure. Uh, this doesn't really fill me with confidence. Uh, we didn't really truly break the skinny pink line. Like this, this was a true break. Uh, this is not exactly a true break. We came back down. So there is danger uh, that we could still head lower for ADA BDC. So be very, very careful. ADA against USD. Uh, here we are for ADA USD. We're still above the skinny pink line. So obviously we expect more upside for ADA USD. We are still looking pretty bullish. We still expect 125 to be hit. We're at 71 cents right now. So this is still, yeah, there's still meat. There's still meat in the move for ADA. Another 75% towards the upside. Uh, but again, we're also kind of overbought, not severely kind of, uh, and you may argue this is a double bearish right? Higher high on the price, but lower high on the MACD, lower high on the RSI. Could be, but I don't think so. Could be. Could be a reversal, but I don't think so. Uh, reason being, we're above the skinny pink line, right? And yeah, there's still more upside targets for ADA. 125 is not it, to be honest. We still have another target close to about $2. So now, right now, we're only 71 Right, uh, and if anything, this is a wave two. We're in the midst of a wave three. More likely than not, we should be going to 125. More likely than not. And wave three is usually the longest, never the shortest. Right, if you were to consider, let's say for example, this downwards to this upward swing here, 200%, right, if we are here and we match it at 209%. Or, or, okay, it's, it's around here. $1.40, we'll overshoot 125. That's my guess for Cardano. I think Ada is going to do well. So, never fade, Charles. Moving on would be Doggy Coin, Dosh against BDC. So, for Dosh against BDC, uh, it's not as obvious, right? We are kind of, not really, but kind of above the skinny pink line. Uh, if you zoom into the small time frames, it might look like a squeeze. It's not definitive, um, but yeah, we could be consolidating a little bit longer before heading higher for Dosh BDC. But again, at the same time, uh, we could also see a zip back down, right? Up, we can see a zip back down as well. Because Dogecoin tends to do this, you see, against BDC. It has a habit, a knack of doing this. So this could happen as well for Dosh BDC. We're not entirely sure though. Uh, the chart pattern really isn't that clear for Dosh BDC. So there you go. Against USD, Dogecoin is, uh, we've already broken out of the squeeze over here. Right, uh, we're in, again, just like BDC, uh, Dosh BDC, we're in a consolidation face, right? This is a range that we expect Dogecoin to stay in for some time, right? Uh, we don't expect the skinny pink line to be taken out. We expect us to just muck around uh, 20 cents to about 12 cents, 20 to 12 cents in and out, in and out, up and down, right? Nothing too obvious, nothing too 
uh, crazy, right? Uh, would be great to see the volatility die down a little bit before continuing higher for uh, Dogecoin, right? We still have our target over here at 30 cents. So we, go, we could also very well just zip up over here uh, for Dogecoin. We also anticipate all of these highs to be taken out plus this one as well. So we're probably going to go to 50 cents. Yeah. So we're only at 16. So more upside is to be expected for Dogecoin. Much more upside. Uh, the only question is, how much lower are we going to be correcting first, right? We're probably going to sweep these lows though. That's my guess. So this will be around 15 cents. Right now we're at 16. So we might come back down under, right? And this is actually a bearish engulfing. So yeah, look at this. It's engulfing the previous candlestick. So this is not good. This is a potential reversal. But uh, if you were to zoom in to, I mean, zoom out to the weekly, it's long-legged. It's not exactly dojis, but it's long-legged towards the top and down, which means there's significant buying pressure and also significant selling pressure, right? There's indecision. Uh, on the monthly, it's still big. Big green doodles for Dogecoin. So 30 cents is still expected for Dogecoin. So yeah, there you go. We're still expecting more upside. Uh, the only question is how much longer are we going to be consolidating around this range? That's the question we want answered. All right, boys and girls, hope you guys have a great week. And if you haven't checked it out yet, check out um, the last week's video where we checked out uh, the comments left on my videos. So go ahead and check it out if you haven't yet. See you in the next one. Have a great week. Ta-da.